Welcome to Raw Online Anatomy Lecture Series. Today, we will start the lecture with a small case scenario. A 42-year-old female patient reported with pain and swelling below her left jaw. The pain had persisted for 10 days. She complained of intermittent swelling and pain during meals, which resolved after the meal. She reported foul smell from her mouth. The swelling is in this region below the jaw on the left side. Anatomically, this region corresponds to the submandibular region. We should know the structures present in this region so that we can identify the structure which is involved in this case. The structures of the submandibular region include the suprahyoid muscles and the extrinsic muscles of the tongue, the submandibular and the sublingual salivary glands, the lingual facial arteries, the lingual hypoglossal glossopharyngeal nerves along with submandibular ganglia. In this case, the swelling persisted during meals and resolved after the meal. So, the structure involved in this is a salivary gland. So, today we are going to see about the submandibular gland and this associated ganglion, submandibular ganglion. This is the competency for phase 1 MBBS students as per CBME curriculum describing and demonstrating the morphology relations nerve supply of submandibular salivary gland and the submandibular ganglion. It also includes the clinical aspects of the submandibular gland. Let us see about the submandibular gland. Submandibular gland is one of the three main salivary glands in the oral cavity. It is a mixed salivary gland which is predominantly serous. It is located in the submandibular region partly below and partly behind the body of the mandible. This location can be understood with the help of this picture. This is the posterior view of the mandible. This is the inner surface of the mandible. This line is the mylohyoid line which gives attachment to the mylohyoid muscle. Above the mylohyoid line is the sublingual fossa which is related to the sublingual gland and below the mylohyoid line is the submandibular fossa which is related to the submandibular gland. So, part of the gland is related to this fossa behind the body of mandible. So, this is submandibular fossa. Part of the gland is below the body of the mandible. So, we can see here this part of the gland is behind the body of the mandible and this part of the gland is below the body of the mandible. And this part which is projecting below the body of the mandible is seen in the digastric triangle which is also called as submandibular triangle. So, part of the gland is seen in the digastric triangle or the submandibular triangle. Since the main content of this triangle is the submandibular gland, digastric triangle is also called as submandibular triangle. So, what is the location of the submandibular gland? It is partly behind the body of mandible and partly below the body of the mandible in the submandibular region. In this picture, you can see a part of the submandibular gland also extends deep to the mylohyoid muscle. This is the mylohyoid muscle which is attached to the mylohyoid lion. This mylohyoid muscle forms the floor of the oral cavity. Here you can see the main part of the submandibular gland is superficial to the mylohyoid muscle that is it is present below the floor of the mouth and a part of the gland is deeper to the mylohyoid muscle inside the floor of the oral cavity. So, we can say that submandibular gland has two parts, superficial part which is superficial to the mylohyoid muscle, this part, the deep part which is deep to the mylohyoid muscle. In other words, mylohyoid muscle divides the gland into superficial part and deep part. But remember both these parts are continuous with each other along the posterior border of mylohyoid muscle. So, we can say that the 
submandibular gland has two parts superficial part which is superficial to the mylohyoid muscle or which is below the oral diaphragm the deep part which is deep to the mylohyoid muscle both the parts are continuous along the posterior border of the mylohyoid muscle so this is the posterior view of the mandible with the mylohyoid and the submandibular gland in this picture you can see the submandibular gland here they have removed a part of the mandible to view the structures of the submandibular region this is the cut part of the mylohyoid muscle which forms the floor of the oral cavity and this is the superficial part of the submandibular gland which is seen in the digastric triangle this triangle is the digastric triangle between the anterior and the posterior bellies of digastric muscle and this part is the superficial part of the submandibular gland and this is the deep part of the submandibular gland so both these part are continuous along with the posterior border of mylohyoid muscle let's now see about the superficial part of the submandibular gland so while describing the submandibular gland the superficial part and the deep part have to be discussed separately the superficial part as we have seen it lies superficial to the mylohyoid muscle and part of the superficial submandibular gland lies behind the body of the mandible this part and part of it lies below the body of the mandible in the digastric triangle so this part is related to the submandibular fossa and this part is seen in the digastric triangle so superficial part fills the digastric triangle and the submandibular fossa it has two ends anterior end and posterior end and three surfaces inferior surface which is also the superficial surface lateral surface and medial surface in this picture we can see the uh, medial surface but we can't see the lateral surface at as it is close to the submandibular fossa